Hello and welcome to this video where we're going to take a look at something other than Cubase for once. So this is Cherry Audio's Voltage Modular Nucleus and they're making it free at the moment. So it comes with modules and units and so on that you can play around with. So we're going to take a look at how you can get set up with that. So go to this URL here, which I'll link in the description, cherryaudio.com forward slash free. And then down the bottom of the page, you can put in your email and you will get a redemption code, which will allow you to download voltage modular nucleus you will need an account with them as well but they'll take you through all that so just put in your email here set up your account and then you should be good to download it so once you've created your account and put in that email you will have the chance to redeem the purchase code on the page here so you just click the link in the email redeem your purchase code and away you go So you can see here now we get to the product page. So we've got voltage modular software for Mac or Windows. And we can see we've got voltage modular nucleus, etc. So all of these. So what I'm going to do is download it now on the Mac and install it. So here we are, download. Save the file. And install it. Now, just a thing here, I'm only going to install the standalone and the VST version because I don't want to have AU or VST or AAX. You may want other things, but I'm just doing that. I do the same on Windows. I only normally install VST3 and standalone versions. So it's the standalone one we're going to play around with, but you can use the modular VST3 plugin inside Cubase. Obviously, if you've got a different sequencer that uses a different format, then you may want to do that. And once we're installed, we're good. So now I'm going to load Voltage Modular. I use Alfred on the Mac, but it's the same kind of thing on Windows. If you just tap the Windows key and type the first few letters, and away you go. Now you'll need to sign in with the email and the password that you use to set up your account. That's fairly straightforward. I use a password manager, so I don't even know what my passwords are. I just copy and paste everything. Now, once you're logged in, you'll see it will download the modules you are entitled to own. So it'll take it a few seconds to do that, depending on your internet speed. But you can see now these are all downloading and then their little thumbnails will appear. And then once that's finished, I'm just going to maximize this so we use up as much of the screen as possible. And then first thing to do, audition some presets. So this is a great thing because there's loads of presets in this which allow you to see how you can link things together and just instantly get sound out of it. So if I just play a note on my keyboard I've got attached. We can see straight away we're getting some uh, interesting sound. But on this Mac, obviously the screen is not big enough to see what's going on. So here... We've got the zoom, so I'm going to zoom that to about 60% so we can see an overview of the whole patch. Now, if you're not, in fact, I'm just going to zoom in a little more. There we go. So you could just use this as a preset instrument because obviously modular synths can be a little bit complicated to understand, particularly at first because you come along and you see a patch like this and it can be pretty confusing. So we're going to just go through a few presets and then actually create just a simple synth from scratch and then you can start having fun doing that so arpeggio is a classic thing for modular synths so i haven't tried any of these because i've got the full voltage modular as well but we're just going to say link ah, unfortunately the one i was looking for is not here but let's just go through so you can see with just a few notes with these interesting patterns here you've got lots of interesting stuff that can happen it's, it's just loads of good patches in here there's also well, drums and percussion so let's see if we've got obnox beat that sounds like that's going to be a mess
click the start button. So we've got a bass drum here, and then on this one, we've got some sort of noise based percussion and so on. So you could spend a few hours just noodling around with this, but let's start from scratch. So we're going to click new and we're not going to save that. So this is going to involve initially three modules. So what we'll have will be an oscillator, which generates the sound and an amplifier, which is going to control the level of the sound, but attached to the amplifier, we're going to have an envelope generator, which will control the amplifier's level over time. But first things first, let's get an oscillator. So we can just search up here. OSC gives us an oscillator. I'm just going to add that. You can drag it on as well if you want to do that. So this oscillator, once it's given a pitch, it will run all the time. Okay, so I'm just going to briefly connect this up and show you that the oscillator is actually producing the pitch of your keyboard. So here we've got what they call CV out. So traditional modular synths run on control voltages. So we're going to take the pitch of our notes and put it into the keyboard CV control here. So just going to connect that up. And now this oscillator, when I play a note on my keyboard, I've got a little MIDI keyboard attached here. So when I play a note on that, this oscillator is actually changing pitch to reflect the notes that I've played. So I'm just going to turn this down a lot because it will get annoying really quickly. But now if we connect any of these outputs, so you see these different waveforms along the bottom. I'm going to connect up the sine wave because it's probably least annoying. Connect that up to the left output and you can hear that running. And if I play different notes on the keyboard, Now I'm only touching the keyboard, I'm just pressing a note and then releasing and it stays on whatever the last note that was played. Now I'm going to disconnect that just by clicking one end of the cable and then dragging it off. So obviously that will get annoying really quickly. So what we need is an amplifier which is going to be controlled by an envelope generator to turn this on and off. We can probably do it without the envelope generator and just have it turning on and off with the gate button. So let's give that a go. So we're going to add the amplifier. So here's our amplifier. And actually, I'm just going to drag this over so it's a little more clear here. So I'm going to take that sine wave and put that into the input of the amplifier. And then I'm going to take the output of this amplifier here. Now, I clicked and held on there because I want to connect it to left and right so I'm going to have two coming out of there. So then you'll get it on left and right. Now at the moment, you can hear nothing's happening. And the reason is the amplifier is turned off because it needs a control voltage in. Now we can do that with just the gate. So gate is a signal which is on when a note is pressed on the keyboard and turns off when there's no keys pressed. So if we connect this to the amp, the amp is either going to be fully on or fully off. So at the moment, still nothing. Now, when I press a key, I'll press it and hold it. There we go. And then when I release, it turns off. So now we've got a basic monophonic synth. But you can hear it really does turn on and off instantly. And that's why we're getting those clicks, depending on where we are, because we're probably turning off right at the peak of one of the waveforms, and then you turn off instantly and get that click. So we want to control that a little more smoothly. So I'm going to put in an envelope generator. So the envelope generator is going to go in between the gate signal and the amplifier. So I'm going to unplug that and plug that into envelope generator. So now the gate from the keyboard is going into this. So this is being triggered when the key is pressed. And then the envelope out is going to go to CV in. So now it will play in much the same way because our attack and decay and release are zero time-wise and the sustain is 100%. So, But you can hear it's already a bit smoother because this, although it says it's zero, it's probably got a very, t yeah, see, it's two milliseconds. So it's just a tiny little fade out. But now we've got a synth where we can have attack time or release time and so on. So already it's built the equivalent of a simple monophonic 
subtractive synth. If you want to change waveform at the moment, the way we're going to do it is just by picking a different output on the oscillator. So you can see, you've got different waveform, you've got pulse width, so you can hear that. Sine wave, triangle. So I'll leave it on sine wave for the time being. But that's just how to get up and running with voltage modular nucleus, which is free at the moment. So I'm not sure how long that's going to last, but I'd imagine it will be for a few weeks. And it's definitely a worthwhile thing, even if you're just going to load it up and use it just for the presets and tweak around with the presets. But as you can see, with a bit of practice with these modules, you can create all sorts of synths. So we've just created a simple single oscillator subtractive synth. We haven't even put in a filter. So in the next video, what we're going to do is look at how you would put in a filter to that. And then you've made the equivalent of, of many a simple monophonic synth. So I hope you found this useful. I hope you're keeping safe and well and keeping out of everyone's way at the moment. And I will see you soon.